So, let's see what we're doing first. All right, I guess I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put that gantry in. It looks like I need to lift this up like this. And man, this is like so solid. I mean, it's a fully metaled, probably weighs about 15 pounds, like a milk jug and a half or two milk jugs. Yeah, yeah, that's how I reference weight. Milk jugs. I'm country, what can I say? Country! That's hilarious. All right. So, which way does this go? This is gonna go. All right, so I believe the body of the extruder, where am I at? So it looks to me, y'all can tell me in chat if I'm right or wrong, but on this photo, it looks to me like when I install it, the extruder, come on autofocus, the extruder is on the front side. Like I see a little angle slanting to the front on this side here, and the extruder is on this side too. So when I put the gantry on, I think it's gonna go like this. I think. Uh, wait a minute. That can't be right. <laughs> this is the top. Okay. Hold on. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, how is this going to go? Over okay, sorry. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. All right, that makes much more sense. Okay, now how does that go in there? Okay, I see. Okay, cool. Okay, we got this. I got this. Um, I think. Oh, well, that's a really tight fit. Okay, so. All right, we're going to take two of our little things, and I'm going to start everything just by hand. Well, let's see how this goes. Hmm. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to put this over in this direction. This is when you need like six hands. Oh. Yes. All right, so. All right, I don't know how I'm gonna do this actually. Let's see. Where's Rosalind when you need her? This would be an awesome Rosalind job. All right, so I'm just gonna put that up through there. I'm gonna look at that. Okay, that's there. Okay, so I'm just going to pre-feed these, and then I'm going to line them up. One. You can switch back and forth between the angle and the overhead, or have the overhead as part of the view. Oh, where'd it go? Uh, there we go. Okay, so those go in really, really deep, just so you know. Deeper than you think they should. Teenagers, man. All righty. Okay, that's enough. All right, just, I'm just going to get them started there. That is actually really easy. I mean, actually, I'm surprised at how easy that is. Those two are already started. And now it's holding itself. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to do this here. I get these other two the bottoms. All right. That's actually really easy. Lines right up. Yeah, okay. Can I invert it totally? I don't think I can, but I can kick it up like on, on that maybe, maybe, I think, yeah, I'm not anywhere near started there, okay, okay, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this up and I'm going to hang this side off the edge. So I have that far side that's away from me. This one has already started. So to start this one, I'm just gonna lean it off the table. And I just dropped the tool. And 
It's over here. What are you doing? Huh? Okay. So you can't see, but I'm basically off the front edge here to make all this here line up. And then there we're started. All right. All right, we're half done here with this part. All right, that looks interesting. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate this around, do the same thing, hang this edge off, because that was a lot easier than trying to do it sideways. Just saying, if you're gonna have a big two, two foot tall printer in your arsenal. All right. How's everybody doing? Is anybody watching us? Anybody laughing at our antics yet? Hey, two viewers is more than zero. <laughs> that, that, that's true. <laughs> One of the viewers is someone named Zero. <laughs> that's hilarious. Sorry. Yeah, that's funny. Funny. <laughs> All righty. So that literally sounds like I was saying two is better than just zero, which <laughs> literally, you know. I got it. That was funny. All righty. All right. So that part is done. The gantry is installed. So yeah, four screws to install one gantry. Do this, don't do that. Okay, gotcha. Filament holder installations. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this back onto the table. My best friend is also watching. She sent me a message acupuncture needles, so. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, you know there's acupuncture needles. There are these little, uh, yeah, there's an acupuncture needle here. Very, very little. Who wants to be poked? Me. Yeah. So these, 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 these. So for those of you that are new to 3D printing, so there's these tiny little nozzles, which I don't know if Logan uh, can zoom in on. Like they're tiny. And the little nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, which is basically about as thick as the needle. And so when you're cleaning them out, Basically, anything thicker than an acupuncture needle, as you can see, it goes all the way through. You can clean it out with the acupuncture needle whenever it gets clogged. And it's very nice of them to include all that stuff. All right. Okay, we've got some handles to assemble. So it looks like these guys go on top. Yes, they go here and they face forward here. They face forward. Guess it doesn't really matter. They go here and then this. Okay, I see what we got. Okay, this is pretty easy. This is plastic and this is plastic and it goes through here and then this goes back on and you're all set. So that's, and then it turns down and there you go. That's one. We do. I am gonna, so we're out in the garage. We live in the desert. It's like a hundred degrees out. And uh, so when we're out here, um, it gets a little sweaty. So if you notice me being a little bright, my apologies. I do. Um, I do want to get. I, I do want to get what is called a swamp cooler. Has anybody ever used or heard of a swamp no. cooler? Nope. It's basically. Um, it's like someone's designed to make big outdoor spaces cooler. Oh. Uh, it's basically like a humidifier, but the way it works is it puts water into the air and that cools down the air and it, and it blows. So it's like a fan with water, which doesn't sound like it would cool that much, but believe it or not, it really does. Okay. M4XB. I don't see, I don't see those, where those are. Those just go right in there, I think. Right? I think, maybe. 
maybe. Yeah, I think these guys just go right in. But I don't know what these are for. That's what I'm wondering about. Well, let's give it a try. Let's just see what happens here. Nothing beats a try but a failure. All right, let's see. Yep, yeah, that looks like it. So four screws for a gantry. Four screws for these holders, of which there are two of them, and I think the thing is built. And it's just about connecting some cables. That is actually really awesome compared to the Prusa kit I purchased, which, oh boy, that took what? That took a long time. By comparison. Oh yeah, those aren't going in there. Oh, okay, you do this and the T-nut. What does the T-nut do? I have no idea. Does the T-nut hold it in place? Is that the idea? Four X-axis spacer. Okay. I all right, so I am looking to figure out how these go on there. I think I, okay, I think I get it. Okay, I think these don't go into those holes. I think these T-nuts go into this channel. That's what I think happens, because this doesn't go into here. There's no threads. Okay. Yeah, there's no threads up there. All right. So I don't know. So I think, so the way we do this, Insert the T nut into the channel. Please don't. Please don't. Nobody wants to see that. I promise. Okay. Ah! Okay, it's in there. Hey, it landed correctly. Okay, let me just do a little test. There we go. Okay, so now that one is in there. I'm going to get another one positioned correctly. All right, so the way this works is these little T-nuts. Are you doing the overhead? Do the overhead for me. I'll, I'll try to do it over here in front of the overhead camera. So the little T-nuts go into this little channel, and then when you turn them, they like lock into the channel. I don't know if you can see that right there, but now that screw is locked in. And then we're going to take two of them and slide them down here. Then we're going to use, oh, try not to undo them. Okay, this part's a little more annoying than the other parts. I don't know if anybody has a trick, leave it in the chat for making T-nuts stay stationary. I'm going to get one in here, and then we'll see what happens after that. Okay, let me get one settled. That one is at least started. Okay. You know what? 
here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these on these and then put them in the channel. That's what I'm gonna do. Because I think that's gonna be easier than anything else. So yeah. I'm gonna get right here. Logan. So I'm gonna install the T-nuts and the screws onto this and then put that in the channel and then tighten it. That's what I think we're gonna, that's where we're gonna have success. That's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that on the other one too because trying to do it without having, I don't know. I think that's gonna be a little bit better. So let's do that. Ah! Oh goodness. And that, ladies and germs, never mind, I found it. I was gonna say that's why they have an extra right here. For just such a situation, but I found that one. All right. Here we go. How is my uh, director Atlas doing so far, guys? Tell her in the chat, let her know. Tell them. Tell them if they're doing a good job. I mean, don't blame them for the material they have to work with. That's on me. <laughs> but you should let them know if they're doing a good job of at least letting you see what I'm doing by cutting back and forth to the different things we got going on. Oh, boy. Didn't break it. All right, here we go. Let's try this one here. All right, so I think this is going to work better. So I've started the T-nuts in the little handle. They go to the back, right? Or they go to the front? I guess it'd make more sense for me to go to the front because the extruder is in the front, right? So they go. Where's the box? Where's the photo? <laughs> it doesn't have them on there. It doesn't really say which direction. I guess it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's personal preference. Well, I guess I'm going to do it to the back. I don't know. What do you think, chat? Which one looks better? The back or to the front? I think to the back. I like the spools. All right, so now. I do know. Okay. All right, now we're going to see if my theory about installing them in this first works. I believe it does. I believe he do. <laughs> Don't know why I'm channeling that guy from Princess and the Frog. What's his name? Does anybody the remember? The Firefly. The Firefly. Ray. Ray. <laughs> bull gotta do what a bull gotta do. I promise I won't sing my sweet Evangeline. Although I'm thinking about it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to torture these people. Torture the people. What? All right, thank you. <laughs> Let's just not look at that part. All right, once I install these, I'm going to take a little break. All right. Let's see if this works. All right, and that does work, by the way. I'm doing it that way, where you install the T-nuts into the handles or the spool holders. Here, I'm gonna see where I want them. We got a spool on here and it's about that big. We want it kinda maybe in a little more like that. That's where I'm gonna put them. That is a really tall printer. I'm just saying, this thing is a monster. 
I mean, I've seen bigger on YouTube, but, you know. There's always a bigger one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no matter how big your 3D printer is, there's always somebody with a bigger one. Don't let it get you down. See, that's not going to fit both spools, so I do have to put them some more further apart. Yeah, they're going to bump into each other. So, strike that idea. I'm going to separate them again. Cool thing about those T-nuts is you can, you can move them. You just loosen and adjust. It works really good. done with this I'm gonna grab some water take a little 30 second or 60 second intermission and then we'll actually get to plug in this thing and turn it on and seeing if it blows up and explodes and kills all of us wouldn't that be a great news headline yeah. four die in 3d printer related incident <laughs> in Santanella California All right, I want more here. All right, so, all right, with that done, we're gonna take a quick break and I will be right back. Welcome back everybody. If you're just joining us, we are building a Creality 3D CRX, dual extruding 3D printer today. We uh, did all the assembly, which wasn't much. It took us about five or 10 minutes. It was uh, four screws to connect the gantry, four screws, two each to connect each of these spool holders. And that is all the mechanical uh, assembly that we had to do. And the rest of this was done at the factory before being shipped. Now there are four little cables, one, two, three, or maybe three cables that we have to connect to the motors. And then I think we're gonna be able to print. So let me have a look here. X axis adjustment. Uh, 100 millimeters. X axis adjustment, 100 millimeters. So do I go up 100? Is that what I'm doing? Is that what they're suggesting? All right, I guess I need to get out a ruler or something. 100 millimeters is four inches. Um, Let me see. I just need a tape measure or anything that scissor rulers. What's that? Oh, the scissors have a ruler. Hell yeah, I'll use that. Oh wow, how handy! It does. They're like you can't see, but maybe you can see if I angle it just right. There, there are. Yeah, you can see that. There are like marks for inches on the scissors. Wow. Thank you, Quinn scissors. All right, four inches. Not sponsored, baby. All right, so exactly what am I putting up 100 millimeters? Is it gonna be 100 millimeters to the top? 100 millimeters to here. To here, no. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what it's telling me to put 100 millimeters. Oh, okay. So they say that there's a spacer. I do not see a spacer. Is this, because this is not 100 millimeters. Does anybody see a black spacer? Yeah, it looks like there's a little piece of black plastic. It's just like a little rectangle. No. No, that's the thing that the the needle was poked into. All right. Well, I don't see that spacer, but it says that it's a hundred millimeter spacer. I am going to put that needle back in there just so it's got some weight to it. 
Is there a piece on here? I don't know. What's this here? Oh, okay. How does this roll? Okay, I think. Ah, okay. These have little clips. I'm just going to take this off just for fun, just to see if it's on here or under here. Those are on there really tight. Let's see. All right. Sorry, let me look. Okay, so spool and nuts, spade. Doesn't show me a spacer here. So they're supposed to be a hundred millimeters, which is four inches from the base to this, so I'm to the base of that. So we're gonna, we're gonna basically use this as a good guess. So the bottom of this should be at this four inch mark. So we're gonna drop them down. I'm gonna look to see when that comes into the mark there. All right, that looks about like it to me. Let's look at the other side. That looks about right. I'm gonna assume that's 100 millimeters. Looks pretty close to me. The cable connections, okay, we got Z1, Z2, and then Z. Ah, okay. That's where this guy goes. So this guy is gonna go here. So we have this little stop limit switch. And this little stop limit switch here. And this goes on this side here. I guess that senses the X axis. That's why we just rose, raised it up so that we can install this. And there's two screws for that. So if we we're keeping count, that's a total of two, four, six, eight, ten screws. And this thing is totally assembled, I guess. I forgot about this little stop limit switch here. All righty. For this, it's just a little piece of plastic, and you just attach that. There we go. All right, and then, so there are these, you can't see them here, but there are these little cables under here. Whoop, let's see. Oh, you know what, that probably needs to be out from there. Don't know where that goes yet, but there are these little cables underneath the print bed. This one is a little one, and it goes into there. One of them fits, you can't misconnect them, one of them fits this limit switch. The other one goes to the motor, which is right behind here. You can't see it unless you're looking at the top. And even then, it's kind of hard to see. We got right here behind the motor, behind this gantry, there's a motor, and there's one little cable to connect here, there's one little cable to connect here, that's two cables connections, and the other motor connects right here. You can probably see that on the overhead. No, you can't. So let me scoot. So you see this little cable right here? There was two of those on the other side. There's one on this side, and it just plugs only in one, one possible direction into, there's some foam in this connector. Some black foam from the packing foam. Get something to get that out with. Just a little bit of foam stuck in there. Probably from all that. There we go. 
all that uh, bumping around on that boat across the sea. In reality, shoot this to the U.S. All right, I think we're all connected. The ribbon cable then goes up. Ah, ribbon cable here. I'll put it on this camera. There's a ribbon cable, the rainbow cable we discussed earlier. Plugs right here into the side of the extruder. Which I don't think you can see on the top angle. Well, you can see it a little bit at the front of the edge. Now, it looks like it goes in this direction. Then I think all the cable connections are even complete. This has got to be one of the simplest printers to assemble. You know, there we go. Line all the pins up, don't want to bend them. This reminds me of my old school PC repair days in the 90s. Had a lot of these kind of connectors. And there we go. That is connected there. And I believe all the cables are connected. Oh, wow. So, yeah, what's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten screws, four cables. Ten screws, four cables to build the Creality CRX. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be compared to the Prusa kit I built two weeks ago, which, by the way, that's an awesome printer. It's a workhorse. It's been doing great. So with that, we're going to use this nice power cable, and we're going to plug this in. We're going to turn this thing on. All right. I'm excited. Oh, let's move that back. I'm going to angle it. Put it back toward the center of our overhead view. And then, Logan, you can get the screen here. Zoom in and on that, because that's what we're going to be dealing with next. And the power cord goes over on this back side here, looks like. Real simple and easy to do. Normal PC cord. All right, and uh, if somebody could do me a favor, plug that in up there. Woo! Let's see how this goes. All right. 